What's up, what's up, everybody? Hoya Rock, and we are back, Smoking Word Podcast. Shout out to everybody who's been tuning in. Thank you, everybody. If you haven't checked out the last episode, the 25 to Life episode, go peep that. We had a blast on that one. And shout out to everybody who's been um, supporting the movement, the podcast, Smoke AD. Look out for us in December in Detroit at Black Christmas. And also check us out in Albany at the Extreme Music Awards show, which we're going to talk about right now with my brother. But today we're going to do things a little bit of a flashback because he's a returning guest, but we're going to go into some other shit because there's a lot of things happening in the fucking, the, the, the mountains of fucking Albany. Everybody, right now we're going to set this shit off with my brother, the, the voice behind Brick by Brick, and one of the masterminds or the mastermind, we're going to find out who's behind it, behind the Extreme Music Awards. Your favorite missing finger, gorilla, and mine, Mike Valente, break by break, everybody. <laughs> What's up, bro? <laughs> What's up, Mike? Anyway, welcome back. And um, by the way, I, like I was saying before, I love the the king of missing fingers. You're my fi- my favorite fingerless fucking um, um axman out there. <laughs> How you doing, but, brother? No, but good. Everything's good. What's up with um upstate? What's cracking? What's up up there? What's 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 well, there's a lot of shit going, but right now, what's going? You just got out of work. You're at work. Where are you? You home? I'm at home, chilling. Um, yeah, just uh, upstate's been been doing really good music wise. Things have been getting really consistent for heavy music up here. Um, shows have been doing really well. Yeah, you're um, doing a lot. Yeah, it, no, that's it, good shit. That, that's that's the 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 good thing. What I wanted to do with this, with the, we're gonna be doing a bunch of um podcasts leading up to. From now to the end of December, just showcasing a lot of bands and a lot of, you know, a lot of upcoming stuff that's happening, especially in Albany and upstate New York in January, which we'll get into that. But um, I want to talk to Mikey. First of all, brick by brick. The brick last time, brick. How, when was the last time I had you on? It was a while ago. I had all sorts of technical issues because I'm stupid. But- <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I remember... Cause you know, I remember when you had it on, you were just about to do something, and that was a while ago. And I know you had a couple of little runs, and I know you also been occupied with the show. But what's the deal now with Brick, brick by Brick besides the upcoming show? What you guys been up to? Well, right now we're in the studio. Um, That's what I want to get into Joey Z from Life of Agony's producing us, and I gotta Joey. tell you, the guys, the guy's a master. I, yes. I love him in the studio. He pushes us. Um, I've never had a producer that actually took ownership of what we're doing. And it, it's so, it's just really humbling, you know, just, uh, yeah. you know, having him at the helm and, and just making me work. It's great. So we're, we're recording um, a new record dropping out in the spring. Um, we How only have, songs? what's that? How many songs? Uh, we're going to do five. But we're gonna we're gonna release a full length. But so the uh, other side of the vinyl is gonna have uh, a live set that we're gonna record on December sixth. So it'll be five studio songs and uh, five live songs. And one of the songs that we're doing in the studio, we're redoing um, uh, "Thunder Kiss" by White Zombie. So we're doing. I love that. Track. But, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, we gotta. I like I like the throwback metal and shit like that. So you know, you want to know something? When that track came out, like a couple of us, we were fucking with it hard, but you know, people weren't allowed in the hardcore scene to like it when it first came out. You know, it was too like this or too that. At least in New in the city, it was like that. Like I'm like, yo, these guys were half dudes from the scene anyway, but they were doing some artsy shit. But I seen them open up for Sepultura Lamores, and I remember I was like. I don't know what this is, but I want to do something like that. Because they already were on that groove shit. You know what I mean? They had that groove, and I was a, already a thrash kind of guy. So I was like, man, they're doing something different than everybody else. And then the next thing you know, but Maddie and Henderson and myself, we used to fuck with that track a lot. You know that. 
But uh, uh, it's a great. Ahead. Everybody knows it, and you know we just we like to have fun, you know. So that just uh, and and once Ray lays the vocal, I, I'm really excited for him to lay the vocals down. He hasn't done that yet. We're gonna go down Thursday to do that. Yeah, but uh, that's that's right in his wheelhouse. It's gonna sound awesome. I'm really yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He got a strong voice. He's gonna kill that. And let me ask you this: How did you connect with Joey? Because we had talked in the past. When you were t- before you found who you were going to record with, we talked about different people and mentioned. And I remember you mentioning, you know, you wanted to be able to get a real, you know, producer this time around and all that. And you got yourself a fucking real producer. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, how, how did that you fall into place with that? Because not anybody could just get that either. You no, know I mean? we we've you know the 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 past records that we did. I mean, we had producers, but they really they really just let us make the decisions. Yeah. So when we were, when life of agony and sick of it all played in Albany, I was, you know, talking to Joey and, and he's just such an easy guy to talk to. And I was just talking, you know, we, we just, we, I brought it up. I said, Hey, I said, I, I, I heard, uh, I think it was a sworn enemy song that, that I, I fell on. And, and I said, yo, I said, that, that, tracks really dope i told him i said we're thinking about going to the studio and he just looked at me he goes i would love to do brick by brick i said really i said awesome so let's get this going so you know a year later we just i hit him up i said yo you want to do this i said and he's absolutely and he's really excited and and it was just I, i like i said the experience has been so good and here i am you know usually like in the past we would you know, do a couple of tracks. I'd be playing, and you know, the the, the whoever was tapped as producer at the time was like, "Okay, yeah, just fix this part, or let's do this over." But Joe's just like sitting there. He's like, "Oh, that was a great take." He goes, "Let's do another one." Oh, that was even better. Let's do another one. Next thing I know, I did twenty takes, yeah. and he's like, "Okay, let's move on to the next song." I'm like, "Okay," and then. You know, he would make me work from the back to the front of the song, front to the back, you know, all different angles with these songs. And it just guitar tracks took me like 16 hours, 17 hours. You had to work for one, for, for a for while. Five, it had to be work. Yeah, for five songs. And I was just like, and at the end, he just, he said, you know, he goes, I really appreciate you not arguing, not questioning. Just, you just did it. I said, yeah, whatever, man. I said, you're the boss. I said, I just do what I'm told. That, that's, that's the name of the game, though. You know, everybody has, every cook has the way they, you know, they they mix their ingredients. And that's a technique, you know. Some people want to do, like, they're cool with a couple of, you know, you hit it a couple of times, it's there. Other yep. people want, no, they want to, you know, I can appreciate, I, I don't. I don't like doing it when I'm doing it, but I appreciate them wanting a lot of takes because that means they want to make sure they have a perfect take of every single chop in the song, yep. which is important. When, you know what I mean? There's theories to everything. You know, some people say being too anal, you, you sometimes get lost, and then sometimes you don't do enough. I always feel more is better at least to be like, you can always strip it down, yep. you know? You can always go back to that take yep. two, you know what I mean? Like, instead of take 20, you know what I mean? If necessary. <laughs> yeah, and, and the way he worked Jeff behind the drums, too, was amazing. Uh, yeah, and when we track drums, we we did those songs a few times each, and you know, and, and you know, and after the second or third time doing the song, he's like, "All right, Jeff, you're getting warmed up. Let's do another one." And, you know, and and then he could tell when Jeff was starting to get a little tired. He goes, "All right, Jeff, one more, and I think we got it." And then you know, but Jeff was he's so pro behind the drum kit. He just, again, he didn't ask; he just did it. We just you know. And that's dope because also, you know, again, this is where it comes with having a real producer and a guy like Joey. Yeah. Again, um, some of these producers, they don't want to be there. So they're almost mad. You know, they get pissed off at, at, at you not d- ex- doing what they yeah. expect of you. You know, a guy like, but there's a psychology to that, that a studio psychology that that's real, real. Yo, it's like a fight. You want to get built up, motivated. You want to be like, look at even if you know, hey, you 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 know, you got to work this track. For, you know, even if we need twenty takes, but you say, yo, you're sounding good. Let's hit it again. Keep your you know morale up, momentum yep. up. You got to do that. Some people just there's some of these guys. I would hear some horror stories. You know, where guys are just kind of getting chopped down. I'm like, 
yo, you know, that takes away from, you know, the, the vibe of music. You know, you're excited to do this. You want that energy to translate. Yeah. And he, he just made the whole experience so easy. And, you know, I've, I've been in a studio, bazil, studio a bazillion times, and it's just, this is definitely the best experience I've had. And I, I can't say, I'm not putting my past experiences down, but just the work ethic and the way he drove us. I, this I, And this stuff that we're doing now, it's, it's so out of the box for brick by brick. I mean... We're, we're this this whole record's a cross between municipal waste and and slayer meets hate <laughs> it's crazy it's just yeah. it's it's a lot of thrash in this which is awesome you know yeah that's dope that's dope and, and where was the studio at uh well he came up to Albany to do the drum tracks gotcha. um because it was easier for for everybody up here and just to get the vibe of everything so we gotta we used over it multimedia studios in Albany um, and then we're doing we're tracking everything else in his studio in Long Island well oh, yeah he that's what he had in Long Island spot yeah I remember yep. yeah because yep. I know he was doing that's cool and shout out to Joey man you know Joey's always like you know I, you know I gotta say this even with him you know for a while he was I I he had offered or I know he had done other people you know in the scene he's always wanted to do like he never like went away just trying to do you know other styles of music he always you know fucked to the hardcore kids trying to get records done you know because i yep. know he's been like you know even with us in the past i mean the past i know he's always been like yo there's a studio i got a studio i need shit you guys got i need to coming up i'd love to do it and he's a great and he's a good guitar guy you know so it's good when you have a guitar guy and he got to do big records in his past so you get to get some of that um big record uh swag he might know little <laughs> tricks of the trade and shit and he's always been a guitar nerd like like studio nerd he's been into that shit for a long time so that's good yeah and and, and, uh, and uh andy just did his bass tracks yesterday and uh you know andy he probably andy, said, mad quick yeah he, he's dope he killed yeah him. he's not he's not the kind of guy to get really overly excited really he's just very yeah so he called me about 11 o'clock he came back after he was driving back after tracking. He was just like, he goes, I'm so psyched for this record. And I'm like, Whoa, all right. Goes, all right. He goes, dude, it was so awesome. So yeah. And then Joey called me today. He's like, yeah, we had a really great session yesterday. And I yeah, said, all right. yeah, he could play and he's good. Good player. So I know that must've been like, he's, you know, even for Joey, like good, you know, and one, another, <laughs> Because you know, at the end of the day, once you get the performances, then he could concentrate. Which I know what he loves is the mixing, the yep. mad, you know, all that. So it's like, all right, let's get the fucking grunt work. Then he could go in and mad scientist shit. Yeah. And um, you did this. You got the band. You've been doing shows. You've been doing shows for years. You yeah. know, we we talked about that the last time, which was a while ago. But if people don't know and they live on the rock. <laughs> Mike's been doing shows in upstate in fucking Albany in the Troy area for a hundred years. And the last time we talked about it, I want to say the last time we talked, you were actually talking about the space you have now before you got in the space. Because you, I, I, I want to yeah. say, I want to say you said, I remember you being, there's a big room and <clears throat> and so and so and blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. you know, you were like, this is a new spot. You know, I think you have it for a minute there. There was like a, a little bit of a down. For yep. spaces in Albany, I remember. You see, marijuana doesn't kill all your brain cells, people out there. But I remember that. I said you forget the sh short term, not long term. Right. But we're gonna lead into what you're doing now. But I've been seeing a lot of shows. Uh, I mean, I know what, what Empire. You always had your hand in it, but it seems like the last year or two, like it almost seems like you're. We're doing that more than the band. Obviously, you do because the band isn't on the road all the time. But I mean, before everybody knew, oh, Mike, oh no, Mike from Brick by Brick, Mike from the thing, and then yeah. no, now is you're, oh, Mike from Brick by Brick does the shows. Mike, yeah. you know, he's doing this show, that show, which is cool because it's like a double title, and you're also, I think you're you're known just as much for doing that, and that's something newer, like not newer, but like you're getting yeah. more. Recognized for promoting the shows now than you did before. Yep. So, the the past I noticed like the past year to eighteen months. Yes, two years. I guess yeah, I noticed things have been getting 
really consistent. Um, the scene came back stronger than ever after the pandemic. Um, bands had to start making up for that lost time. And now it's everybody's like kind of reinvigorated again, I guess. And I noticed that people aren't taking the shows for granted as much as they used to. So bands that I used to book that would draw 200 people are now selling out the big room upstairs. And it's crazy. Like just for example, that band Lorna Shore. Oh, uh, of course. Book, and I used to pay him a couple hundred bucks. There'd be 200 people there and we'd call it a day. They sold, they sold out a thousand tickets in four hours. Oh Both. yeah, that's huge. Yeah, yeah. Shout yeah, out to just, that man. Cool band too for what they do. Yeah, I mean, definitely. but but the progression yeah. it, it happened so fast. I was just, I had to like get on the phone with these agents and go, "Yo, are you kidding me? This that's a lot of money." They're like, "Dude, that's gonna sell out." I'm like, "No, last numbers I got were this." And they're like, "Yeah, it's different. It's a different yeah. game." I go, "It's only been a couple of years," and I'm boom, blown up. Yeah, I, yeah, we noticed that. Well, obviously, like even with the hardcore scene, the style of bands. Which shout out to all the new bands, but like, yeah, there's that, um, 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 um that two year hiatus. A lot of bands in the scene, you know, it's a reset. And maybe you know, we definitely know from playing shows, it was kind of maybe necessary. You know, shit gets you know people. You know, you know the fan, the the fan. I hate saying the fans, but the the people going to shows. You know the show goers, the people in the scene. You know they they get a little bit um um, um spoiled and or, or just faded out of it. You know what I mean? It needed yeah. something to like re spark. You know it made me appreciate people I hated. <laughs> you know I remember seeing certain people I like that I used to be so annoyed by, and when I saw them on that first show back in the park, I was like, you know what? I'm glad to be annoyed by you again. <laughs> You know, because it's like you appreciate, like, wow, but you know, there was being able to see each other. You know what I mean? There was that contact that, that one, like, you know, high school, you hated high school, but when you showed up there, you had your homeboy. That's the guy who's an asshole. That's the cute girl. That's the, you know, you had a, 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 a like a, you know, a, a city within a city. I went to that park show and that, that was an emotional moment. That was the same thing. I was, it was so overwhelming. Just from being, yes, by myself with you know my my yeah. girl, it's just it's like wow. I tried a lot of times like that, exactly. Like being with, like I remember again seeing dudes and being able to hug, like yo, what's up? Giving one of the guys a hug, and I'm like yo, I ain't seen you in two years. Yeah, like and now we're at a show, like from not being able to maybe see each other, who knows when? Now we're at a show, like what we're doing again in a beautiful day, and it was great, but. It definitely kickstarted everything, and I noticed it with the shows, and I noticed it obviously with the new venue, which it seems to be doing great because I seen mad shows. How, when you got in the new venue, I I, I know obviously you still got to work shit. The, the, it, what was it hard at first? I mean, it's always hard, but I mean, because I remember you were like kind of not sure on how it was going to do because maybe the size of the venue, and you weren't sure. Yeah, well. Yeah, so basically when, um, so, so the venue is a culmination of myself, um, this, this guy, Stan Livingston, who's a big promoter out of Philadelphia, um, uh, Dave Seward, who, uh, ran upstate concert hall, which was in Clifton park. So it was like 40 minutes, uh, North of Albany. And now we got, um, mass concerts that's coming on board buying into a partnership so when the when this first happened it was we had the thousand cap room upstairs and the 350 cap room downstairs and they're like we need you to work that room downstairs i said okay so you know i just i, I started doing stuff periodically because i didn't want to just schedule a show just for the sake of scheduling a show i wanted to keep it quality you know and it started getting more and more and more and to the point where I actually left my day job, which, you know, so now I'm pretty much just doing this and, and the band and I, I'm, I'm sitting there going, wow, I'm, I, I can't believe that music is actually paying the bills for right now. It's first time in 
30 some odd years, you know, but it's good. If anybody, you know, I'll say you deserve it because you've been, you know, like I said, a lot of people don't know you've been involved with doing shows before, you know, forever yeah. when you were doing, you know, doing thrash shows before the hardcore craze doing hardcore shit during the, the hardcore craze, you know, heydays up there, you know, my heyday in upstate. Cause I know there's that Steve Reddy version. I wasn't yeah. around for that. Right, but right. Like my era was like, you were doing shows up there already. So it was good. And I know you, that's one thing I always said that I think some people may that don't know you like that. They see you with a bottle and they think, Oh, this guy is just the, the fingerless, the, the, the king of the missing fingers, okay. Axeman from brick by brick who just drinks Jack Daniels. But one thing I do know, and I said this to you, I know how much you love the music and the scene and everything about it. I always said this about you. I noticed that if it's the smallest band to the biggest band, you loved everything about it. If it's going on the road, the camaraderie, I know you like playing the music, traveling. I know you liked everything about it and you always did because I know you've done it when you didn't have to do it. And I also know, you know, you were doing it from the thrash days the the metal days up there which again people forget that all these type of music weren't they weren't always that popular you know right. so you had to really love this shit to want to fucking do it you know what i mean and, and, and to do it right you know to get the right of people that's why you doing the shows i always said yo that's dope for you because i know how much you love it and now this thing that we're going into now you're doing the fucking yeah. extreme music awards yeah this is so something that we're going to get into, I always want to say one thing, which yeah. I'm so glad you started. We're going to get into that whole shit because we needed something to represent the heavy music scene that had no politics involved. I ain't right. talking shit on everything else. But, you know, there's obviously, uh, you know, there, there's a way of a, a way things certain, uh, there's, a, there's a way things work in certain, you know, places, but... I know where how this started with you from the love of the music and wanting to just give a shine to you know the people that come from our yeah. world. So I know it came from an honest heart, you know, and all that. And what better place than the East Coast, which didn't have that? How did this come up? Let's get into like where did this idea pop up and how did the shit get set off? You know, because well, what what, what, what really. Um... There, there's a couple of local award shows up here and uh, brick by brick was nominated. And, you know, I, I just, I sat back and, you know, and I went to the award show cause it was, I was like excited. I'm like, well, wow, we got nominated for whatever. And I noticed that the, um, the first show that I went to, we got nom nominated for best metal. And I said, okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. And the bands that we were up against, I never heard before. And I like to think that I've heard a lot of the bands in the local area. And, and we got beat out. And I wasn't butthurt about it or nothing. I'm like, okay, well, you know, now I got to look these bands up. Because, yeah. you know, maybe I want them to play the club, you know. So I look them up and I notice that they really have no social media presence. They got they one band never played out before. And then I, you know, I talked to somebody and I said, oh, I said, how these bands, I don't understand how. The, oh, they're like, oh, you just vote. You can vote for yourself a million times. I'm like, oh, all right. So I, that's how the band won. I'm like, all right, whatever. That's cool. It was a cool little kudos for to just to be nominated without having to vote for myself. So that was the first one. The second award show I went to, and we were nominated for Best Hardcore Punk. And we're definitely not hardcore punk. Um, and all the bands that were nominated for that genre did not fit in that genre. They had a glam band, they had a garage band, they had us, and they had like a couple other bands. And I was just like sitting there and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And then the 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 all girl garage band that won, you know, she's up there making a speech talking about hardcore and how unity and this and that. And I looked at my wife and she she says, That girl's wearing a two thousand dollar dress. I'm just like, so I was just like, you know what? I said, it's just, and it just triggered the idea. And it was not out of spite, but I was just like, nobody's paying attention. And, and it's not just in the Albany area, but I mean, and it, it, I reverted back to what, 1990 when Jethro Tull won best heavy metal over Metallica. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, 
So they're not paying attention. The, the you know, the hard rock, you know, any awards, they're, they're not, they don't pay attention. It's like everybody kind of just brushes metal, hardcore and punk off the table. Like, fuck that. I go, you know what? I'm going to start, you know, these, a lot of these bands in the low, and I just figured the 518 local area, they, these guys, there's so much talent up here. They, these guys need to be recognized, you know? So I got together with Ralph Renna. He was the first person I called. I said, this is the idea I have. And he's like, this is great. And we just went from there and we designed, uh, we, we have a panel of five of us. It's myself. It's Ralph Renna. Artie Ferdet, who has a, a magazine up here, and he's got like a history in the punk scene from back in the day. Uh, we got Brendan Manley, who used to write for uh, Alternative Press, and he, and he's into the hardcore scene, you know, like '90s hardcore. And then um, we got Fuzz, uh, who does that fuzzing rock show, and he used to be a DJ with Ralph back in the day in the late '80s, spinning hardcore and. So we got we got all got together and we designed this thing and I'm just like, you know, this is this is just we got to pay we got to let everybody get their accolades and I, I said the first thing I want to do is brick by brick is not eligible for anything because I don't want anybody to yeah. fucking play yeah ah, you know what I don't need a trophy it's like yeah, you know what yeah yeah no you know what it is yeah. I, I I'd rather see my friends smile and get their fucking props you know simple. Yeah, and, no, no, go ahead. No, definitely. It's a it's a, a great idea. And it was something that I always, you know, a couple of different people would always say that the East Coast needed nobody. You know, you, it's always like in, in barbershop talk, like they say, you know, in van talk, talking, this would be cool. Because the metal guys always had the golden horns or whatever, the golden yeah. god award, or whatever, the golden shower awards or whatever the fuck they do. You know, shout out to all you golden shower fucking award winners out there. But, uh, <laughs> but no, definitely and hook it up with Rob. We're gonna bring up let's get let's bring him on now. Speaking of fucking um um of um uh, um Troy, speaking of um the, the 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 white trash mountains of Albany and Troy. No, but on the real, let's bring on an old friend of mine that part of the of the of the what you call it of the of the it's cooks, one of the, one of the cooks of this um of this um Delicious meal that's getting prepared for fucking January. Let's bring out um upstate's finest. Let's get them up here. Let's get roll, roll the voice behind rolling with Ralph. Ralph Rayner, let's go. Yeah, but only here, only here in white trash upstate New York do we grow guns. Legally, now when you come on the show, that's the way you come on the show. That's the way you do. I'm saving this for January 10th, boy. That's right. You already know. But on the real, I want to shout out my boy Ralph. There's an old friend of mine, Polly. I'll say I can honestly, you were probably one of my first 95. One of my first out of the old. Upstate crew with all the wartime man and all the whole upstate crew. Ralph was, we would always be talking shit. That's why when I saw you doing radio, I said he's perfect because he's good at talking shit. Because oh. <laughs> I know, I know we had many years of talking shit and, and cracking on people. Yeah. Anyway, but Ralph, what's up? How's it going? Good. You know, I, I got to interject about Mike Fellaini though. Um, yeah, brick by brick, steaming along, recording a record with Joey Z running the club, but Mike does a lot for the community, Hoya. Yeah. And Mike's been working with deaf people. Mike, can you show him your new sign language? Oh. Can you show him 3.30 yeah. in sign language? Last call, last call is at 3.30. Look at Yeah, <laughs> shout out. And he signs. Go figure. He plays guitar, Perfect. sign language. Perfect. Fucking hardcore fucking. When he cut his finger, when his finger got cut off, I remember when it happened. And he walked into Saratoga Winners and Attica was playing. I'm like, how the fuck you do? I'm just don't need that finger, man. I can use these three. And I was don't like blown away that he could actually still play, but you know, change your tuning a little bit. But yeah. So Tony, you and Jamie Joster I, got the king of the missing fingers, I guess. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, um, um, what has eight fingers and fucking <laughs> and, and two mics? <laughs> anyway, that's another, but Anyway, but we talked a little bit before, but it was good to talk to. I mean, we mean we talk shit quick, but we haven't talked yeah. in many, many years. But yeah, I know yeah. you've been doing the radio state. Let everybody know quick. This is because this is very important too. Because you're running a radio station. One, just 
help it promote the fucking music in general and in general and, and it's also a big part of the upstate you know the the north east scene you know because that that albany area is a, it's a it's a very important place you know everything after that is new england you know you go through there and then the yep, next yep. season new england and then everything under that is the city you know sure the connecticut but you know what i mean um let everybody know the radio station what's what because it's it's cool that <laughs> um we have people that are from the real people that are from the scene like mike doing the shows and guys like you that went to shows now being the voice promoting shows and also you know asking the questions real fans would ask some of these bands I but think, um, i think everything came around full circle um i was just doing my podcast online and um mike had come to fuzz and i actually the night of the award show we left and we were all like this is bullshit and mike called fuzz and i'm still sitting in the car and he's like i want to do my own award show what do you guys think and i'm like i don't know okay let's talk about it and yeah. then as i thought about it overnight i was like this is a good way for me personally to reconnect with the hardcore scene because i don't play in hardcore bands anymore i don't i don't book shows because mike has a handle on that if anything we're kind of allies where i'm getting these new bands at the radio station and he's you know yeah, i pass them along go, yo book them or he and, says you can and, be playing yeah. these guys so anyway uh about a year ago thanksgiving time i discovered waby i started talking to the owner and here we are full force with the extreme music awards it's november we got two months to go and the hype is there and everybody's coming on board and we're like, wow, we're really doing this. And all I was doing at the time was a podcast. Uh, so anyway, long story short, the guy asked me to sell for the station. I said, I can sell me better than I can sell your advertising. If you give me your platform to put my podcast on, which is Capital Underground, local music, Sunday nights at six, give me an hour. I said, I have four sponsors. I'll give you half the money. I bribed him. I bribed him. Yeah. Pretty much bribed him. So he put me on the air, and the next day he said, 15 listeners at 10 a.m., 450 listeners at 6 p.m. Why don't we make you full time? So he gave me a lot of control of the station, which at that time helped because the I got to promote the Extreme Music Awards through it. And now I was back in my place. I wasn't a band member. I wasn't in bands. I was just the radio guy who helped Mike's band back in the day or helped wartime and then eventually i got involved i was a little bit of a 94 i start i joined politics a contraband and and last call and all those other bands but i got in kind of late these guys were going a good 10 years before me so now i'm kind of still not in a hardcore band but i'm back where i need to be yeah no for sure like mike right. too but mike's still playing but now also doing all the promoting with you mike out of all the people you know sure ralph has a podcast he has a radio thing going on you know a lot of people that have that, you know, the, the same thing. Why Ralph? Why, you know, obviously I know you're good friends for years, but you have a lot of good friends who love the music and that. Why Ralph? Because I, you know, I, you know, I know also he's always been a, like in the early days, you know, um, he was always around the music. Exactly. If it wasn't the band, there's certain people, you know, that yep. they were really involved with the scene. And there were some people that were in and out, yep. you know, it's, so it was good to see Ralph come back around, but what, what, what made you pick him? It's simple. He's one of the hardest working people in his genre. You know, I mean, doing you know, he he does music as you know with with as much intensity as I do, but different areas. And yeah. you know, with, like he's got the radio background, he's got the the podcast background, he's got all that. You know, I'm the one with the band and the music and all that stuff, and. And I don't want to do it. I just told you this morning on the fucking phone, I do not want your job. I do not <laughs> want to book bands. It's a bigger headache, you know, a whole thing. And, you know, Hoya, Mike and I had lunch one day, and I said we should start doing some things together. Because, you know, we had the Hudson Duster, and we helped the each Hudson other. Duster, that's right. what I remember. Mike had the that. Hudson Duster and Stupid White Boy Entertainment and all that. And we kind of got – and then Bogies, and I helped out there. But you know what? We never really did anything big. And it, it was 2012. We're fucking – you know, eight, nine years later, and this kind of just happened instead of me and Mike going, okay, let's make something happen. Yep. It happened for the right reason. And I'm like, I looked at him, I remember that day at lunch, I'm like, we should do something together. Yeah, this is the event. Now, this is the second year, and we're all blown away by, by the response we've been getting. And, and man, if I were to win Best Hardcore Award 
and and fucking Hoyer Rock handed me this when I was 24, 25. I would have I would have shot a load right in my pants. Anybody kids, they're this, excited, they're you know why it's cool because like I remember, you know, explaining to my parents, just like, yo, I'm gonna go to Europe for the first time, and they're like, wait a minute, somebody gonna pick you up? Like or somebody, <laughs> you know, and like let alone like, you know, I've done many albums and it came to the point they're like, you know, are you a real band, or like in some people they you know they don't get to see it, right? To be able to be to I remember telling rest in peace to my pops but the first time he oh they always loved everything i did but yep. we got to play um um, um Wembley <laughs> arena with limb biscuit and i remember that was the first time i told my father i go yo i'm playing wembley he go you playing wembley because he knew it from the 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 stadium for because of soccer yeah but he, it was like his madison square yep. garden but for the first time he was like oh shit. and i remember being like you know wow you know it's like you know it's good to have be able to show you, you know, people that aren't from our scene. Wow, you know, this is it's real stuff. You know, yeah, it's crazy music. We look crazy. We jump on each other, but there's, you know, you can, you know, there's people that respect it, and and you know, really, like, like, like people like you wanna respect it so much that wanna give these people the accolades, and yep, yep. they've been doing it for more and more. Look, we've been doing this shit. More yep. years than fucking brain surgeons. Yeah, it's going on 40 for me and Mike. I know that. Exactly. Going on, going How long on. it takes to be a brain surgeon? Right. Sure, you gotta be a little smarter than us, a little. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, there's a lot of years put into this. But Mike, now you get you call you call Ralph, whatever. All right, but there's more to it. It ain't even that easy. What's the next step? What happens next? Well, I mean, I just wanted to make an award show that was better than the other local ones and the, i didn't want stupid politics i didn't want things to be watered down i wanted it to be as fair as possible and i wanted there to be a reward at the end and when i say reward it's not just the trophy it's not just the accolades but you know like i said it's like what what would be a flair that would be different to raise the bar and i'm like Let's get real fucking rock stars, rock stars to actually present. That people. sold me right away. That idea. I'm like, me. I said, just being in a band for all these years, I culminated a lot of friends and I'm like, yo, I said, you know, and, and Jason Bittner, he's local, you know, drum hero from, from our I'm area, from hero. Uh, shadows fall, all that stuff. And, and he happened to be available, and I, you know, I called him. I said, "Yo," and he's he loved it, and he ran with it. And you know, after the first year, the first like last year, we we went by the seat of our pants. We really didn't yeah. plan very well, but everything yeah. just fell into place. Yeah. And I remember, like an hour before doors, you know, after rushing around, I stepped outside to get air and there was a line around the block. And I was like, holy shit. I'm like, wow, we did this. This is crazy. So and then, loud. then it's like, then, then I get the, I got to jam two songs with, with overkill pretty much, you know, with, with uh Bobby Blitz and Jason Bittner and Phil demo and uh, Nick Stamos who's in this band. And it's just, it was crazy. It was just like, and and everything went up. There was no mistakes made during that All Star Jam. And it was yeah. just, and it wasn't planned. Jason yeah. just threw out a bunch of songs that everybody just learned them, and we played. I'm like, this is crazy. And this year, the like I said, the bar got raised. I mean, we got we got some heavy hitters coming in this year. And yeah, no, for sure. I remember looking at the stuff, and, and you know, whenever you see a lot a, a big group of the of your friends, you know, you always like, man, I wish I was there. But I remember yeah. seeing that and saying, man. I wish I was there because I remember a bunch of the fellas went up for the whole weekend. Yep. yep. <clears throat> I think I remember Gallo or somebody yep. Yep. Who was there. But I just remember seeing him and I was like, he, you know, me and Gallo could stand in the hallway and just laugh. And then I saw him there, you know, he's running around, you know, the, the show. And I was like, man, I could see myself right there too, you know, like, you know, involved with not even playing. I was like, which shout out to Mike. For, for inviting us to be able to play it this year too. I'm amped on that. But um let me well, ask you this. Go ahead. Last year, last year we had uh Ezak do a video presentation for for the award thing and it didn't work out and it never got posted. And I remember talking to him and I was like, yo, Ezak and you, 
that that's that's a power character duel. duo. Sure, right but I'm Sonny. <laughs> No, it's like Lucy and Ricky it. Ricardo. That's my Lucy. <laughs> yeah, last year, last year we had Gallo and Stigma. So this year we got Jorge and Isa. Yeah, no, and, 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 uh, I'm psyched and it definitely will be, you know, it's one of our first shows and it's, and you know, the minute you asked me, I was like, hell yeah, you know, I'm down. Like it would have, it was like something I would have, you know, I, just trying to come out the box with the band since we haven't played. You know, I wanted to make the first one. I want, you know, you know, wherever it was, if it was a house party, it'd be one of my people's, you know, us, you know how it is. Yep, You're breaking yep. the, for a new band, I'm breaking the champagne bottle. So my first couple of shows, that's my champagne bottle for my new band and shit. So it's good that we're going to be able to do that. Let me ask you this, because I know you've explained it in the past, but I want you to explain it now. And since probably both of you guys could get into it. How's the, 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 the what do you call it? Um. How do you pick the bands and how you go about, you know, who, who are the people picking the bands, the nominees, and how you go about, you know, quick little, how you go about picking these bands and stuff? Because First of I all, want, I, hold on, I just want people to know that you guys are legit. Oh, yeah. Not just picking your Mike home. Made it, Mike made it that way. Yeah, Mike made it that way. Yeah. And first of all, we should say that you got to go to extrememusicawards.com. You have two weeks left to continue nominating bands in 22 categories, all extreme metal, punk, rock, hardcore, metal, deathcore, metalcore. We we really, you know, who has the best mosh pit? Who's the best beatdown band? Who's got the best merch? We really got into our scene, and Mike definitely on his own came to us and went, here's all the categories, and we went, yep, 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 all the way down. We and only changed category, one. Yeah. So we categories, only, I know. You guys yep. had a couple guys you work with, correct? You, Ralph, <laughs> and it was obviously a group effort with the categories. Was it that you each throw some ideas into a pot and then you picked it? How no, Mike's big old brain come up with it. We just went, yup. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> because you have to take a fucking idea and throw it against the wall and see what happens. And that's yeah. what we did last year. And when we did it, it was like, Whoa, because I was worried because I'm the guy announcing the presenters. I'm the guy who's got to get the videos ready. I'm yeah. the guy who I said to everybody, I said, I'm the production guy. Let me handle that part. Mike, you handle everything else. Let me just focus. And I think we I hit it off because I was so nervous that it wasn't going to come off right. We had the videos up. We had the people's names up, the sponsors, the videos were rolling and everything rolled like fucking butter. And when we left that night, the next day for weeks, we were like, wow, I thought all this hype would have been like a, it's up there. And then boom, we yeah, hit yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. But no, it fucking went like a skyrocket. And I'm going to say this year is going to be just as good, but I'm walking in a little bit more like, okay, don't get your hopes up because we never know something could go wrong, but now we, we, we didn't have five months to plan. Yeah. We started planning January 12th, the day after the show last year or whatever it was. And we were on it meetings every week. Now we're getting this guy. We yeah. raised another five, $10,000, whatever it was, uh, more money to spend in the budget to get this guy to come in and fly him in. And we really made it happen. And Mike, I, yeah, go ahead. Finish. Yeah, that was it. That was it. It's just exciting, but a lot of yeah, Mike's no, ideas. No, no, we just and, went, and yep. that's great because that's the whole thing that people don't understand that it takes a lot of that politicking to make these things happen to, to be able to fly these people in, <clears throat> connect the, 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 the dots with um, um sponsors because these things that, that money just doesn't fall from the sky. People don't no. understand how some of these things work, Mikey. With the categories, was there any category that you did last year? that you're doing this year that or maybe something that didn't work last year that you said ah fuck it that didn't work it and this year because like, you know that's what happens like, like what was the word like what was your worst or and what was the uh, uh something new you're bringing in you know as far as we we categories. had a we had a we changed a couple of categories around we um we're not doing best band merch this year we're not doing best mosh pit but we added best guitarist, best bass player, best vocalist, right. drummer. So we kind of adjusted. Yeah. And and we did that because we listened to what the people were suggesting. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's like, and I guess the the other the other categories that really didn't work so much were kind of filler just to get yeah. some, you know, space filled, I guess. But like I said, a lot of people 
you know, emailed and said, Hey, why don't you do best this and best that? And I'm like, all right. So, you know, we listened and, and you yeah, know, that's picked- important. You got to listen to the people. Oh, yeah, it's their sure. show, and, you know. And, and who's eligible to be voted for, Mike? Because I know you make you make it a point to let it know it's a you know it's a local. But what's the local? What's your parameters? You know what I mean? Because five one eight. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. I mean five one eight, but we do pull from Western Mass. Yeah, we do pull from Syracuse. Yes. Oh, so we're not opposed to you know, bands from like Syracuse or Western Mass, like Pittsfield, Adams, Great Barrington, whatever, Vermont, it's close to it. The greater Albany area. Yeah, we did get a lot of nominations last year from Bay- way above the White Trash Mountains. <laughs> Where? <laughs> yeah, yeah, gonna- <laughs> uh, we did get a lot mountains, of other caucus mountains. Like New York City, but we, we can't, you know, and, and a lot of people want me to make this bigger. And you know what? To tell you the truth, I don't know how. And it's if we were to make it bigger, bigger, that that's going to raise the budget exponentially. And I don't, I don't know. That's that's, that's our next year's goal yeah. is to maybe acquire a few bigger sponsors like Guitar Center or Tama Drums or Ibanez or Gibson. Those are the kind. That's the kind of sponsorship money we need to bring in. You know, Lars or. Tom Araya or even yeah. the bigger and bands. You guys you know already, I mean? Like you guys were already conscious of it. Like last year went good. You put a lot of time into it. And you said, how can we make it better? You got, you know, more sponsors. You got bigger yeah. looks, you know. So you did what, you know, I wouldn't stress that till after this one. Like you did last time. Yeah. The next yeah. day, start figuring it out. Right now you have, you know, it seems like, again, you know, um, a good electricity. Because I hear a lot of people that were at the last one. You know they're hitting uh, you know hitting me up even saying yo we were there last year it's great time you know people are hitting yep. me up you know they, they they you know they're gonna go check out the shows and they're telling me the whole weekend is dope you know you come out which well, you I know love, but you know how hardcore is though too they're very some people are very um yes. I don't want to insult anybody some people can be narrow minded oh, and narrow minded so <laughs> some people yep. can be narrow minded and say <laughs> that the that this this is this isn't hardcore, this isn't metal to have an award show, but you know, to us, it's important. So if you have a few haters, you got a thousand people that walk through those doors that night. It was important to them. It was important to us because we are what we do. We are musicians and we want to see everyone be treated fairly. Uh, Mike and I were on the phone the other day and this will bounce back on what something we had last year is right away. People were contacting me. People were contacting Mike And, you know, people were like, we should do this in Jersey. We should do this in Mass. You should do this over here. And we were like, no, staying right here for now. This isn't a traveling circus right now. And it can be someday. Um, With WABY and 93.9, where I'm on every day, three to seven, I'm also on in Knoxville, Tennessee. And Mike and I discussed... I didn't get to get that plug in yet, Mike. So don't give me that. Let me get that plug in. So WVLZ is 93.7 in Knoxville, Tennessee. I actually am on the air down there too. So I said, fuck it. Let me reach out to some Knoxville groups on Facebook and see if I can gain some interest to actually start a Capital Underground. And the first person that popped in my mind was Mike. Because I was like, all right, I'm in Knoxville now. We could play two Knoxville bands on Capitol Underground Albany on Sunday. We could play two bands on Knoxville, Tennessee. Mike can bring him and another band down there, bring two of their bands up here. So now with the radio shows, I feel like I'm able to at least bring this idea to people. And maybe that's a way we can also take the award show and say, no, we're not going to do it in Jersey. We're going to Knoxville, Tennessee. We're and, going to LA or we're going to do it in Europe this time. And I know but, for sure we have a lot of listeners in Tennessee. So make sure you go check that out because yeah. uh, for for sure, we have a lot of people that tune in and, and then they're always hitting me Absolutely. up in general. So it's good that you have that. Make sure you, ta- you tap in because also it's a great music town. You know, there's a lot of music, you know, yeah. over, you know, whiskey. and it's a big, it's a big metal and hardcore and stoner yeah. rock town. Everybody yeah. thinks Tennessee, they think Elvis, they think Nashville, they think country music. I reached out. I swear to God, on a Facebook group, I got 50 emails waiting for me right oh, now. Sure. So this is going to start in January. So hopefully Mike and I can bridge the music scenes and start trading off shows with these bands, with our bands, especially the ones who do good for Mike and Empire Live, 
the ones that work hard and promote, you know, the radio show, whatever, we could just get them together and bring them in. But the Extreme Music Awards, ah, uh, man. And that, Michael Bryan, say, we, both, everybody... we both got a trophy last year. Look at that, yo. I, bet, I, yo yeah. I better get it's something great. for me showing that. I don't need a win, but I need something to come on. I need a give You're back. You're going to get something. Don't back. you worry. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, um, Mikey, let me ask you this. Um, talk about some of the bands. This, the one cool thing is what you do, you guys have the pre-party. You have <laughs> you know, the main course, and then you have the after party, kind of a whole full weekend set up. Talk about some of the bands playing. Let's start with the day one and, you know, talk, you know some of the bands and, and who they are. Because it's <laughs> good that, um, I like that you do, again, it shows a lot of shine to the local and the newer yep. bands, you know what I mean? And um, I, I definitely wanted to keep uh, the pre-party the day before as local as possible. Um, you know, we, we wanted you guys to come up because I figured if you're going to be presenting, then got to yeah. bust the band, you know. But oh, yeah. you know, Brick by Brick's going to play. Um, uh, it's going to be con this band, Concrete. They're on. They just signed to Upstate Records. They're gonna. That's going to be their album release they party. Hard shit. They got some and heavy shit. Man. They're they're a band that's been around for a long time. They they were mainly hardcore and they drifted over into the metal and then became more into the darker black and death metal kind of genre and they cross over hardcore riffs and all that. So they, they did a great job with that as brick by brick. We kind of started off more. Well, we've always been metal, but we were more hardcore in the beginning, but now we're way more metal just because the lineup changes and you know, the way we grew, um, we got uh, hope for now, which is a newer metal core band from up here. We got against the rain, we got yeah, so the, the, there's there's a lot of good bands and it, it's a solid, solid lineup. And there's also it, another great band on there, Monsters playing drums with them, Faded Line, Faded. Uh, Dysentery band. I've been kind of keeping an eye on. I slept on this band for a little while, and of course, Smoke AD's debut in New York. Yeah, there we go. We gotta set shit up. I gotta make us yeah. no, but we really am to be playing that. I'm glad to be also um, um presented the next day because you know. Um, I don't get out much, so that's like my vacation. And it's good to, again, I'm glad to be part of something because yep. I always like I'm happy to play more than anything, but more to be like I like what's being done. That um, our our, our scene is making putting a stamp on shit, you know, yeah. big picture shit. You know what I mean? Yep. And and Mike, Saturday, talk to me about the Saturday. What goes on Saturday? So Saturday, so yeah, we got the pre party, so. Don't party too hard because Saturday is going to be the big one. So yeah. Saturday we got oof. last year we were supposed to have Gary Holt uh, come in and do it, but weather prevented him from flying out and he did, but he stuck to his promise. He said, I'll do it next year. So we got Gary Holt rolling in. So yeah. in between doing Slayer again and Exodus, actually I have Exodus coming to the club this weekend. Yep. So I'll hang with Gary for a little bit, but so we got Gary Holt coming in. Uh, we got, David Ellison from Megadeth. Uh, he's coming in. Uh, G, like I said, Jason Bittner is going to be heading the whole all-star lineup. And Jason really helped us get some some good players on this one, too. Uh, we got Eric from Flotsam and Jetsam. We got a couple of the dudes from Shadows Fall. Uh, John, who's in Shadows Fall, but also plays in Anthrax. So technically, we got, we got three quarters of the big yeah. four right yeah. there. Craig um, ahead from Sick of It All. Stick yeah, Man, from, Stick Man from Fury of Five said he's keeping the award. We, <laughs> so we might have to. We might have to. We might have to say. Look out, this that's the war gun. Shout out to <laughs> Stick Man. That's oh, right. Uh, and yeah, the lineup's just sick. And then Jason Bittner has already outdone himself with some of the ideas he's told me about. What he's told Mike, and we are trying to keep this shit under wraps. But we haven't even begun to announce some of the stuff that's going to be happening there because you have to leave some element to surprise. Yes. And like it's I said, the, Mike said it's bigger this year. But you know, the uh, the day after is kind of like, all right, let's all hang out for one more day together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Mike put together some uh, like a band, Skin Lab. I used to love that band. They're playing, and oh. he's got a bunch of other local bands on that as well. Yeah, no, and that and that's dope, which I like. And you could have um, if everybody that Sunday you wake up and you're gonna do something that um, I'm a, I, you know I got to give to Frank Breed from um, uh, <laughs> Hey Breed. You got to order your eggs, 
Yeah. And when you ask how you want your eggs, you say deviled. We're going to do a brick, <laughs> brick by brunch. Yeah, brick, brick by brunch. Brunch by brunch. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, we went to eat brunch. Once. Yo, Frank Frank was with us once. We, we were on tour, and he came in, He came with us on a day off, and we went to eat breakfast, and they go, and so they go to him, so how you want your eggs? He looked at the girl, and he said, deviled. <laughs> I was like, yo, <laughs> he's living it. He's living it. Shout out to Frank Breed. That's right. <laughs> but, but Mike, the whole weekend is set up. I know you got more, a little, couple more surprises, little surprises with stuff that's going on. We know there's a jam that happened. We won't give too much away, but I know there's a jam session where people are going to get to see their favorites up there. It's almost like a Salvador Dali painting. People you never expected to be next to each other, next to yep. each other. One time only, too. It yeah. never, it's never going to happen again. It's like exactly. but to see Mike on stage with Bobby Blitz. And Nick and this guy and Gary. Oh, no, who was it? Uh, uh, Demo. And Bill Demo. See, you on stage, exactly. see you on stage with all those guys. And then, boom, it's Gallo, Stigma, Bob Riley, and Nick. And they're performing Agnostic Front. And boom, get off the stage. Sal from Sworn Enemy walked in. So, and then there was a lot. There was two drum sets on stage. So now you got Bittner and Matt Byrne both playing like that. Leonard Skinner fucking hardcore style. And uh, there's two drummers up there. It was amazing. And, and, and last best. year... When the award show ended, a lot of people, not a lot, but some took off. This year, we're going to encourage everybody, you better stick around because hour and a half, the award show's over. The jam's going to go on all night long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You oh, know? that's See, exactly, yep. everybody. And that's one of the, the, the luxuries you have when you go to an event by the, the King of Missing Fingers that <laughs> there's sometimes after <laughs> hour, there's after <laughs> hour, uh, hours that happen which are, are always very controlled and are able to happen because they have it under control. So uh, everybody to make sure to come out to party. And it's a, and it's a spot where you can have fun all night, all yep. week, yep. you know, trouble free. And cause I know for a fact, everybody that's going there is actually really excited going there. Cause a lot, you know, just being, recognized for what they're doing and just to hang out alone. So I know that the vibe was always, again, I remember, I remember the last one, just watching it from afar. And it was one of the few shows I was mad that I was like, man, I should be there, which I rarely do. <laughs> You're going to be there I, this year. I, I remember it perfectly. Again, Gallo, he, I was watching him and everybody running around and just the jam with the, I seen what Matt and Jason drumming off. All that shit was dope. Yep. I can't yeah. wait to play it. And Mike, what do you want to let before we get on it? I want you. What do you want to let everybody know about this show? What, how, what's the last message about January and brick by brick? You want to leave the people with because they're well, listening, and this is worldwide. If everybody around the planet, if you can make it for the black and blue, if you can make it for the the California show, this might be the new one you start making it out to. So, Mikey, never. what you want to let the people know? Before yeah. we get out of here about everything, brick by brick in the show. Yeah, like I said, a lot of heart and soul went into this. Um, it's just, it's really humbling the experience. And not just for me and Ralph and our staff, but every single person that was in that room, fan, band, nominee, whatever it was, it was just, there wasn't one frowning face in that whole fucking crowd. And when I went up there, the first thing I said over the microphone is, I said, look at all these bands here rooting for the other bands. I said, now, if we could take this and if you all supported each other at every show, we could have a thousand people at each show instead a of guilt a guilt trip. <laughs> it works. Because <laughs> shows but, increased by like a thousand percent. <laughs> but, but like you said, it's great. He's right, though. He's totally right. right. I agree with him. We're, we're, we're totally selfless in this. There's no there's no profits. There's no money. It's yeah. it, you know, the sponsorships, I mean all the all the you know, I get paid a salary from the club, so it's not like um I got to do this for a living, you know, it's, it's, but it, it's, it's just nice to know that it's supported. And if anybody's interested in sponsoring next year, please reach out. We welcome everybody. And if you have an idea to make this bigger, let me know. I mean, yeah, we want to expand. Definitely. We, and we you got to go to, 
Got to go to ExtremeMusicAwards.com. ExtremeMusicAwards.com. You got two weeks left to vote. That's where all the updates are going to go. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. We're posting videos daily, sometimes two or three, from the artists performing with Jason Bittner, from the presenters to the local bands. And I had a question from the Smoke AD video. I noticed a comment, and they were asking why E is always yelling. (laughs) <laughs> well, now, you gotta know, man. Well, you, you gotta must know. not know E. That's you basically know e. how he whispers. <laughs> you know, it's basically that's a whisper, yelling. exactly. That's whispering. Extreme. You don't know what whispering. If you read musicawards.com. You know, but Ralph, <laughs> let everybody know what's up with the radio station and what you're <laughs> expecting from this too. Cause I know you guys busted your ass a lot, and there's still time to be busting your ass because it's a couple of months out. But everything seems like it's going, it's rocking right now. Yeah. Let everybody know what's up with the radio station and what else to look for, forward to, uh, or you know, on the radio station because I know you're going to have upcoming, maybe some of the artists that are going to be um, popping Absolutely. up at the show Absolutely. or even info from the show. Monday through Friday, I'm on ninety three nine waby dot com. It's also an FM station that's here in Albany, New York. Monday. Hold through on a Friday. second, FM station. I didn't know that. It's an FM. It's an, no, it's yeah, FM. That's it's FM. Big, dude. Right, that's FM. I may be, I'm a little older. Yeah. I remember AM, FM. And I remember right. if you were on AM, I was like, yo, right. that shit's static. Right, but so, FM, was like, real so it's shit. not just a podcast. You can get the app. You can get, you can wow. go online and stream. Um, my boss also created another station in Knoxville, Tennessee, three to seven every day, taking my friends, Mike the Enforcer, Kim Neaton there with me as well. And they have shows there. And then our old friend Chris Lynch does a metal show here going to Knoxville as well. And we look forward to connecting the Albany, New York and the Knoxville, Tennessee music scenes through radio and Mike Valenti and Empire Live in upstate black and blue. So a bridge will be being built again. Mikey, let everybody know before we out here again, one more time, where to get that brick by brick and where to get tickets for the Extreme Music Awards. Hit them one more time before we out of here. One more time. So one thing before I do that, I definitely want to give a shout out to our two big sponsors, uh, Dark Tower Tattoos and um, Upstate Records. Um, my own kid, big time. Yeah, they, 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 they really helped uh, push us over the edge for getting money together to help pay for everybody and hotels and staff and production, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Brick by Bricks on Upstate Records. Uh, that will be dropping in the spring. Uh, in the meantime, we'll be at the pre-party for Extreme Music Awards on January 10th with Smoke AD. So come on out. The tickets, I keep the tickets as cheap as possible. Um, you know, I, 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 with Ticketmaster and everything, it's, it's ridiculous out there, but but like I said, it's just this is definitely a labor of love, and and I just I'm really excited for everybody else to be excited. Hell yeah, yeah no, and I'm excited, and we're gonna put up all the info for the radio show, where to buy the tickets, the brick yeah. by brick stuff. Absolutely. Listen, everybody, make sure you get to Albany in January. <laughs> Believe me, I, you would never think you would hear me say this ever. Don't make them say it again. But <laughs> Albany's the spot to be in January. Absolutely. Come and party with a lot of, come and party with family. All of us. Everybody, we're going to celebrate heavy music um, with heavy music, um, with, the, with the right people around, with the, the, the same like-minded people and with people that really, you know, support and um, help the scene grow locally and around the planet. But um, Mikey, again, shout out to you for doing what you do. Roush, uh, same thing with you. Love you, you know, man. Thank you. Without the guys um, giving us um, the bands places to play, um, we ain't shit. And um, <laughs> and thank yeah. you again. You are on January 10th. You know what I mean? You're going to be the shit. You're inviting us. Everybody, make yeah. sure you go. Get that brick by brick. Go tone, yeah. tune into fucking Roush show. We're going to have all the info in. Yeah. Extreme Music Award Show, Albany. Be about it, everybody. Tune in. Until next time, don't hang up yet, guys. Hang on. Yo, we out of here. And get those tickets. Smoke AD will be in the building. Cheers! Thank you. (laughs) Hang on. We're here.